There are a few things you're going to want to know before moving to Tucson, Arizona. In fact, you may want to avoid it unless you can handle these 10 facts. Let's get into the video. It's Rachel Clark with Living in Tucson. If it's your first time to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because I put out new videos every week all about moving to or living in the Tucson, Arizona area. And as much as I love making these videos, I would love even more to help you, your friends, or family with their real estate needs. I'll leave my contact information below. You can text, call, or email me. Now let's get into the video. If Tucson has been on your mind and you're considering moving here, but you're still on the fence, make sure you continue to watch the video to hear 10 facts about Tucson and hopefully it'll bring some clarity on if you want to move here. Some of them might be deal breakers and some of them you just might be okay with. Number one is allergy season. If you suffer from allergies, Tucson might not be the best place for you. Springtime, particularly March through May, is typically peak allergy season in Tucson. During this period, there are increased pollen counts from various trees, including juniper, mesquite, and olive trees. Grass pollen, such as Bermuda grass, can also contribute to allergies. These pollen allergens can trigger symptoms like sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes, and congestion. Summertime in Tucson is typically drier and pollen levels do decrease compared to spring. However, dust and mold allergies can still cause discomfort for some people. So it's important to keep your living space tidy and well ventilated. Fall in Tucson tends to be mild for those who are sensitive to springtime allergies. However, weeds like ragweed can release pollen and cause allergic reactions in some people. The severity and duration of allergy seasons can vary from year to year, depending on factors such as weather patterns and overall pollen count. And of course, everyone is different on how they're affected with their allergies. Number two is the summertime heat. Being in the Sonoran Desert, as expected, Tucson does experience pretty intense hot summers. The average daily temperatures range from the mid-90s to the low 100s, and it's pretty common for temperatures to surpass 105 degrees on most days. Heat waves can also occur with temperatures exceeding 110 degrees, which can last for several consecutive days. For people who are not used to this kind of heat, it can be uncomfortable. Additionally, the hot weather can limit outdoor activities and require extra precautions to stay hydrated and cool. The positive side of this is that Tucson's heat is a dry heat, meaning majority of the time when it's in the hotter months, there is very, very low humidity, which makes it a little bit more doable. The higher temperature months tend to only last a few months and the rest of the year is beautiful with very mild weather and lots of sunshine. Number three is hard water. In Tucson, our water is known to be moderately hard to very hard, containing high levels of dissolved minerals like calcium and magnesium. These minerals are picked up as water passes through underground rock formations, such as limestone and chalk which are abundant in the Tucson area. The presence of hard water can have several effects. One of the most noticeable is formation of mineral deposits, also known as line scale, which can accumulate on faucets, shower heads, and other plumbing fixtures. Line scale building buildup can reduce water flow, clog pipes, and decrease the efficiency of water heaters and appliances that use water. Hard water can also make it much more difficult to form a lather with soap and detergents. The minerals in hard water react with soap to form a sticky residue known as soap scum, which can leave a film on dishes, laundry, and even your skin and hair. In addition to these aesthetic effects, hard water can also impact the lifespan and efficiency of appliances that use water, such as dishwashers, washing machines, and water heaters. The mineral buildup can reduce their effectiveness and require more frequent maintenance or replacement. To help mitigate the effects of hard water, many residents in Tucson use water softeners. Water softeners work by removing the calcium and magnesium ions from the water and replacing them with sodium or potassium ions through a process called ion exchange. This helps reduce the negative impacts of hard water and extends the life of plumbing and appliances. 
It's worth noting that while hard water may have some inconveniences, it's not considered harmful to human health. In fact, the minerals present in hard water can contribute to your daily calcium and magnesium intake, which are essential nutrients for the body. Number four is walkability. Overall, Tucson is a bigger city with a car-centric culture, which can make it challenging for pedestrians to get around in certain areas. That being said, there are some neighborhoods in Tucson that are more walkable than others. The downtown area, for example, is relatively compact and has a grid-like street layout, making it easier for pedestrians to navigate. The University of Arizona area is also relatively walkable, with several shops, restaurants, and amenities within walking distance. Outside of these areas, however, walking can be more challenging due to the city's layout and lack of pedestrian infrastructure. Many streets in Tucson are designed primarily for cars with few sidewalks, bike lanes, or crosswalks. This can make it challenging to walk safely, especially during busy traffic hours. The city has several multi-use paths and bike lanes, which can make it easier for pedestrians and cyclists to get around. Overall, while Tucson may not be the most walkable city in the country, there are still options for pedestrians, especially in certain neighborhoods. If you plan on walking or cycling in Tucson, it's important to be aware of your surroundings and to stay precautious and safe on the road. Number five is the lack of freeway. Tucson does not have a full freeway system like some of the larger cities in the United States. However, it does have several major highways and limited access roadways to help facilitate transportation within and around the city. The primary highway in Tucson is the Interstate 10 or I-10, which runs east to west and connects major cities with other cities in Arizona, such as Phoenix to the northwest and El Paso, Texas to the east. The I-10 passes through Tucson and provides a crucial transportation corridor for both local and long distance travel. One of the downfalls is that within the city, you're traveling light by light and traffic and commute time can add up depending on the time of day. Number six is lack of water resources. Tucson's arid climate and limited water resources make water scarcity a pressing issue. The region receives an average annual rainfall of just 12 inches, significantly lower than the national average. To meet the city's water needs, Tucson relies on diverse sources such as the Colorado River and local aquifers. However, these sources face challenges including drought conditions and groundwater depletion. The prolonged drought conditions, aggravated by climate change, have put a strain on Tucson's water resources. With reduced water supplies, the effects ripple through the community. Agriculture, businesses, and households face increased water scarcity, leading to economic and social challenges. The depletion of groundwater also poses threats such as land subsidies and higher costs for extraction. Fortunately, Tucson has implemented several water conservation initiatives to combat the water scarcity. The Tucson Water Department has launched programs promoting water efficient practices such as installing low flow toilets and shower heads, conducting water audits for residential and commercial buildings, and providing rebates for water saving appliances. Public awareness campaigns have also encouraged residents to conserve water and adopt water wise landscaping. Recognizing the urgency of the issue, Tucson and regional water management authorities have been proactive in developing long-term water management strategies. Investments are being made in infrastructures, including water treatment and delivery systems. Water scarcity is a challenge that requires collective efforts. Number seven is bugs and critters. Tucson, like any other warm and arid region, is home to a variety of bugs and insects. The desert climate provides an ideal environment for insects such as ants, cockroaches, spiders, and scorpions. These critters can often find their way into homes and become a nuisance. Tucson's desert landscape is known to be inhabited by rattlesnakes, including the western diamondback rattlesnake. While rattlesnakes play an important role in the ecosystem, their presence po poses potential risk. Encountering a rattlesnake can be dangerous as they are venomous and their bites have serious consequences. Residents in town need to be cautious when venturing outdoors, especially when it's warm, and take preventative measures to reduce the likelihood of an encounter. 
To help maintain a rattlesnake and scorpion free environment, you have to be diligent in keeping your properties clear of hiding spots such as wood piles, rocks, and debris. Sealing cracks and crevices, installing screens, and using pest control measures are all necessary steps to minimize the chances of running into them. It is also important to keep your pets away and safe from them as well. A bite from a rattlesnake or scorpion could be deadly. Number eight is the limited seasons. Unlike many places across the United States, Tucson does lack four seasons, meaning we do not experience the traditional fall, winter, spring, and summer. Starting with fall, unlike many other places where the trees change color and start to have chilly weather, Tucson's weather is more in the mid to high 90s. So if you're looking to cool off or transition to more fall or layered clothing, you probably won't enjoy our fall season. Jumping into winter, the average high temperatures range from the mid 50s to high 60s. However, temperatures can vary and there are occasional colder spells or warmer days during this winter season. We rarely ever get snow during the winter season as well. As winter transitions into spring, the weather stays around the low 70s to mid 80s, but it does start to heat up. And as you know, being located in the Sonoran Desert, it's known to be for its hot and dry climate. During the summer months, temperatures do get well over 105 degrees during the day and can stay pretty warm at night. It's important to stay hydrated and avoid being outside during the hottest parts of the day during the summer. Number nine is we're more slow pace. When we think of cities, we envision energy and vibrancy. However, Tucson can feel like an exception. The city's slow pace often translates into lack of urgency. If you're seeking a bustling urban environment, Tucson might leave you yearning for more. One of the prevailing drawbacks of Tucson's slow pace is the limited options for entertainment and activities. While it's true that the city offers beautiful nature surroundings and the lack of bustling lifestyle, cultural events and diverse entertainment options can leave residents and visitors feeling unfulfilled. Tucson's cultural and artistic scene can be a mixed bag. While the city does have a fair share of museums and galleries, they often lack the energy and excitement found in more cosmopolitan cities. Exhibitions may be infrequent and the limited audience can diminish the overall experience. If you're craving a vibrant and ever-evolving artistic scene, Tucson's slow pace might leave you feeling a little underwhelmed. And lastly, number 10 is Tucson Roads. Now let's talk about potholes. I'm not talking about your average run-of-the-mill pothole. Nope, Tucson takes them to a whole new level. Some of these potholes can feel like craters from another planet that can destroy your tires if you're not careful. According to a recent survey, Tucson ranks quite high in terms of pothole density when compared to other cities of similar size. These road craters can not only damage your vehicle, but also test your driving skills and patience. The rapid growth of Tucson in recent years has put a strain on the city's infrastructure. While efforts are being made to improve the road network, it takes time, resources, and careful planning to address the increasing traffic demands efficiently. Speaking of improvements, let's not forget the road construction projects scattered throughout the city. Although these projects aim to enhance the road infrastructures, they can also be a nuisance for drivers, leading to detours, frustration, and they take forever to finish. The city of Tucson is aware of the issues and has implemented plans to improve the road conditions, expand infrastructures, and reduce congestion. So while the roads in Tucson may currently leave much to be desired, change is on the horizon. With ongoing efforts from the city's infrastructure, more efficient Tucson roads may hopefully be coming soon and be smoother and more enjoyable for everyone. Now, if these 10 facts didn't deter you away from making your move to Tucson, I would love to talk with you. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Feel free to text, call, or email me. I hope you have a great day.